Grace and blessings be upon you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this faith-filled Easter Wednesday. Have you ever experienced of deeply hurt that this feeling blinded you to see clearly what is ahead of you? This is Sister Clemens bringing to you today's Gospel Reflection on the disciples' journey from doubt to despair to faith in the resurrection of Jesus from Gospel Power. On that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were in the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, We are not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has indeed risen, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. For the disciples of Emmaus, the trauma of the crucifixion of Jesus is so deep that even the news of the resurrection becomes an unbearable scandal that prompts them to leave the city of their dashed hopes and shattered dreams. As they abandon the fold, the risen Christ reassumes his shepherding role and goes after these two straying sheep. 
in this therapeutic walk to Emmaus, the unrecognized Lord demonstrates to the frustrated disciples how the seeming tragedy of the Messiah followed the logic of divine reversal recorded all over the scriptures. In this logic, suffering is an ingredient of glory, and death is the way to new life. All this is signified as bread, broken, and given. As a stranger, quote unquote, and acts the memorial of the Lord's Supper, the blindness of the disciples is healed and they recognize the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, may every Eucharistic meal be an eye opening experience that moves us to deeper levels of faith. Amen. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, Pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Celebrating the Pauline family year of the Word of God from November 26, 2020 to November 26, 2021, with a theme that the Lord's message may spread quickly. Let the word of God spread quickly.